tell me what to say. Welcome to the series Never Did You See with Dr. Cosby and Gourmet Pens, who is yeah, really not grilled. Yeah, Gourmet with the Jello Pudding. Today we'll be talking about the Namiki Falcon. Although now it's the Pilot Falcon. But it was the Namiki Falcon. But you might be buying a pilot falcon. Although I bought an Amiki falcon. I think we've skipped. But if it's just going to be a current review, it's going to be the pilot falcon. Or the pilot device. Oh my goodness. Anyway. Nah. Uh, this pen and I go way back. I actually believe this was the first pen I ever bought from the Goulet Pen Company. Believe it or not. That's a long time ago. It is a long time ago. And I think I bought it for $140. I think. All right. What was your first impressions? What was your first impressions? Oh, you want me to go first? Just, just go. Okay. No one wants to hear you ramble about ramble things. No, because you never ramble, do you? You I... always have such a focused story. I like the pen. Oh. Now, uh, my first impression was very interesting. This was the first flexi nib. I think you can say it's semi-flex. You're the, the flexi lady. Semi-flex? Well, that kind of answers the what makes it special question. It's special because it's semi-flex. It is a semi-flex nib. Okay, that was my first impression because I very much enjoyed it, but I found it very difficult to use. Because the first time you try to do flex, it looks horrible, you don't know what you're doing, if you're like me. And although it's fun, I, it was actually a bit of a letdown because I couldn't make the letters look beautiful. It actually took some practice. And oh, I, who'd yeah. have thought? And then I practiced, and then it looked a lot better. And I wouldn't, I, I'm definitely not a uh, superb flex penman, but I do really enjoy playing with this pen, and that's only improved. What about you? Uh, my first impressions, I bought mine used, so I didn't have packaging. So I, you didn't even talk about the pen appearance. No, it comes in a, in a plastic, a, oh, a yeah. plastic sort of clamshell box. So I think it's a, a, actually a sort of fake leather thing. I think it's... It's, it's not com very spectacular. It's not spectacular, but it's pretty much what you're going to get at this price point. Mm -hmm. uh, and the pen. It is a nice size for me. It's very small for me. Um, I think it has a nice, simple appearance. It's just black. This is the resin version, so this is yes. just black resin with gold trim. And I don't find it a particularly thrilling appearance, but that's not why I bought the pen. Oh, it's black and gold. Yeah, it's but it's very pen. slender, so it's not it's not like a, a wow black and gold. You know? Anyway, you want to show the nib? Yeah. The nib is, of course, why I bought mine, which has that interesting the hooded, not hooded nib, but like hood shape. Yeah, it's it's a very odd one. It, I can it's just a, look at the just look at that thing. Yeah, just yeah. look. Um, this is a soft fine, and mine is also a soft fine, and it's. I, I remember thinking, this is a really peculiar looking nib, and I still think it's a peculiar looking nib. I don't really understand how the nib shape is, uh, why the nib is required to be shaped like this to be a semi-flex, but... Well, I guess because, I mean, usually a nib is very rounded, and this is much... Well, uh, it's thin, but so it also thin. arcs up at the top of the nib, which I don't understand. I guess maybe that's where ink collects. Yeah, so, yeah. anyway. It could also be because they thought it looked cool. Uh, possibly. So my first impressions were kind of mixed. I was like, well, the pen doesn't look spectacular, but I that's not why I bought it. I bought it for the nib. The nib looks kind of weird. And um, I bought mine a little further on in my Flex adventures. The first Flex pen I bought was a vintage Flex, so I think I ruined myself for Flex. And... Um, Right. So, just about your flex adventures. So my the first impression, yeah, with the, with the nib, it's I tried it on just without pressure, and it, it it does work well that way. Um, it is a very fine nib. It has a little bit of give, so it is pleasant to use if that's what you're looking for. And when I would try to flex it, I was curious about it. So first impressions were mixed with my Falcon. Flex, just see what makes it special. We already did that, what makes it special. Yeah, so it's semi-flex. Semi-flex. 
What was your writing experience? Well, I like? guess I might as well continue because I was kind of talking about Yeah, that. you would do your rambling away. So <laughs> Sorry, I ramble. <laughs> I ramble. Um, so, the nib, like I said, it was, it was smooth and it flowed well when it was unflexed. Um, I bought vintage flex before this, so my standards were quite high, although I knew it was semi-flex and not a full flex. But even so, I was a little disappointed by how not good the ink flow kept up, if that makes sense. No. You re I really had to slow down my writing, and it, all the, it mm -hmm. railroads very easily, and although the nib is soft enough to flex to a certain extent, the flow can't keep up with that. So the thing with this pen for me was to learn how far I could go before the the tines would just not be able to handle the or before the ink could keep up. Yeah. And so the tines would spread further than the ink could go, if that makes sense. So I I had mixed feelings still. I know a lot of people love their Falcon. Um I'm not saying it was bad. It wasn't a bad writing experience. It just it was a learning curve. And I think that's gonna be the key for a lot of people who haven't used anything like this. It, it it'll probably have a bit of a learning curve. How about you? Um, well, as I said, it was my first flex experience, so it was very interesting. I've already covered that. Um, yes, I agree. The pen uh, can definitely railroad. Um, however, I find it railroads most when you actually push it to its limits. If you go for a little bit of pushing, not too much line variation, then you actually still get some line variation because it's such a fine. Japanese fines are pretty much extra fine in Western terms. Um, and then I think if you go from, from fine to a fat fine, you get a pretty nice amount of line variation, and then it keeps up relatively well. Also, of course, depends on inks. If you put a somewhat thicker ink in this, I'm thinking, for example, Noodler's X Feather, it runs a lot more fluently and it doesn't railroad so much. So my writing experience has been pretty good. The one thing I would say is I don't find it particularly smooth. I actually think it gives quite a lot of feedback. Um, I didn't say super smooth. I just said smooth. No, no, but okay. I mean just just I, making that clear. I'm, yeah, I'm not talking like buttery smooth. No, but it's again for such a fine nib, you can expect there to be feedback. Not so much tipping material, not so much to polish, etc. So I find that interesting. Mm -hmm. The other final thing I will say is. Uh, um, I guess I could have said this on, with, with first impressions, but the pen is super light. Especially when you don't post it, it's so light you hardly even feel you're holding something. Yeah, even, even I have that. And then, of course, if you don't like it, you can buy the metal version. I know that. I know there's a metal version now, but when I got this, that there wasn't. either wasn't there or it wasn't available, but I couldn't, I couldn't get it. What do you love about it and hate about it? Uh, what I love about it is it is, it is a fun nib. It uh, once I got once I learned how far I could push the nib, um, it was a fun. It, it is a fun pen to play with. And fun, you see. Sorry, sometimes Bill comes up. Bill just slips out. Eh? Okay. Um, right. I think. Oh, I'm just sorry. My brain is just like shutting down. Um, I I did enjoy learning about the pen. I do think nice. it is a fun nib. Yeah. Um, I It is a 14 karat nib and I've used other 14 karat nibs that are a lot softer so you know I kinda wonder you know if they're going for a semi flex why they didn't make it softer um, but if the ink flow is the issue you know I wonder how many like what the channels are like in this feed so, because I know there's also the soft medium and soft broad, so I really wonder what the broad flow is like. Yeah. But it is definitely a fun nib, it's and fun. Yeah. it is a fun to play with. It's fun to use. So, what am I talking about again? What I love? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> hmm, that's scary. And what you hate? Oh, you want me to just do what I hate too? Yeah. Uh, what do I hate? Well, I had to tweak mine to get the ink flowing right. It, it was, it just, it was hard to clean properly because you can't really disassemble it very easily. Very easily. Uh, in the end, the feet had to be punched out from the back. 
and um, yeah, so it's it's a little tougher to clean properly, and if ink collects in it, obviously it's going to hamper your ink flow. So you know that can be a little annoying, and it's not the end of the world. And I'm willing to tweak and work with my pens to get them to work properly, but if you are new to pens, it's going to be a little daunting. Um, this is a converter pen, and it's got one of those like Con 50s, the Pilot ones, and it doesn't really hold very much ink, so that's annoying. Especially when you flex it, right? That's, that draws up ink like there's no tomorrow, and yeah. then you run dry. I, I can easily run this pen dry in half an hour. Yeah, and, and then also it can break. Yeah. So that's kind of annoying too, and then you have to buy a new one. Yeah. But um, I think also I would have preferred the metal version because the resin one honestly like you said it's like holding nothing it's really it's it's very hard to describe but i mean you really don't feel anything like a pile of petite one feels more substantial it's so weird maybe it's cuz it's so slender but um that's my mixed bag of yeah. things bag of things interesting analogy i like the um I, I personally, I like the nib. I think it's nice that you can carry a nib in a normal size pen, a normal looking pen, the pen that looks classy and that offers that bit of spring in a modern coat, so to speak. So I enjoy that. Yes, it may be more of a semi-flex, flex, but um, it's really disturbing. Uh, but I think that's very interesting. What I don't like so much I would like to have seen a filler mechanism with, that can somehow hold more ink. Uh, I, maybe that con, what is the other one? Con, con 70. 70. Would that fit? Uh, it might fit. I don't know. There is quite some space. Maybe that would fit. Well, then, might, we have one. We can always check. Okay, well, then, then that argument would be invalidated, I guess. Um, and I would have liked, too, I too would have liked a more substantial weight. But again, I should buy the metal version. Although I heard that here that even that isn't that much heavier, relatively speaking, but I haven't held one, so I can't say. Would you buy it? Uh, I would buy it. Although I really don't know if it should be marketed as a semi-flex. I think you should. <clears throat> I think you should take it for what it is, and I think the the Japanese term of soft is much more accurate. That's just what it is. It it's should just soft. be, to me, in my opinion, it should just be called a soft nib, and yeah. that's it. And it just soft gives you line is variation, good. yeah, and that's it. But a it's not a full flex. flex. Is... It's definitely not a wet noodle. No, no, no. Semi flex may even be too much. Yeah. But it's fun. But it's a lot of fun, and I really, although I don't really, I'm not like thrilled about the appearance, and I'm not, I, I was kind of irked about the ink flow. I really have fun with this because this is a pen I'm willing to put almost any ink in um, although it's yeah. not the cheapest pen the most inexpensive pen I am willing to play with it so that's kind of fun I could put a lot of adventurous inks into it if that makes sense that I wouldn't put into my vintage flex and perhaps I should <clears throat> sorry I should point out that I have not had any issues with the ink flow of my pen it may railroad at some point but you really had issues where it wouldn't write yeah it was really I have not yeah. had that so that could just either be quality control issue or, as you said, you bought it pre-owned. Maybe there was something stuck mm -hmm. in it, etc. Now, the big question, is it or is it not serious nibbage? The cat is holding up a yes sign. I'll hold up a yes sign, too. Because you I think it yes? is. Yeah. Um, I do think it's serious nibbage, despite my... You know, the couple issues I had with it. Reservations. Yeah, despite that, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. and Fun to play with. It's fun to play with, and, you know, I think if you're looking for something that's fun to play with, but you can also use as a daily writer, it's a good choice. Definitely, because it's modern, it's not particularly fragile or anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if you, bear in mind, if you're looking for flex, I honestly believe the only way to go is vintage 14k flex. If you really oh, want, if you're looking for flex, we can talk. Really, really good flex. That's that's probably what you want to get. And but this is fun. That's just what it is. It's, it's a fun, fun pen. It's definitely fun. And that's how you should. Look and at you it can do some really cool stuff with it if you, you take it slowly. Also, there are people who modify the nibs. Yes, quite so a few people modify them. Get even flexier, and then of course it gets a whole. And I, I'm assuming story. they do something to the food, but maybe not. Yeah, that's um, possible. I, I'm forgetting whether this is is a plastic feeder ebonite. I think it's plastic. I thought it was plastic. You can hack that too. But you so. can have a Spencerian flex modification done, and, uh, and I'm pretty then sure. it's really lovely. Maybe I need to get one of those. That I probably enjoy more. 
and I think if you get the soft extra fine, you, you pretty much get a needle point. So then you go from needle point to much broader, which would, for those of you guys who love Spencerian writing, I mean, of course, it doesn't, it doesn't have an oblique nib holder, but I think you can have some fun with that. So there you have it. We hope this was useful. If you would like to see any other pen covered in serious nibbage, leave a comment below. Not in the cat's head, but leave it any way you want. She looks absolutely horrified. No, um, she's just hanging out. No, she's just hanging out. Is that your idea of hanging out? She's just hanging out, see? She looks terrified. She's hanging out. In any case, leave us that. If you like it, leave us a like. If you don't like it, go away. And um, we'll gladly see you later. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye. Meow. That was a sound effect. It was not the actual cat. Meow. Okay, just turn it off before I keep going. Yeah, well. Bye! Bye! Yeah, I'm Rete. Oh, damn it. I thought I was Rete, but then you started before I was Rete.